Hello class, uh, welcome to lesson 3.4. Today we're going to be talking about uh, classification of rigid motions. So how can rigid motions be classified? So our goals today are going to be identify rigid, different rigid motions used to transform two-dimensional shapes. So we're going to introduce a new type of rigid motion uh, and a new vocab term known as the glide reflection. So uh, remember that rigid motions can involve translations, rotations, or reflections. And so uh, these are some examples of translations. Remember that translations mean uh, a translation means a gliding motion. So essentially, you're moving, you know, a figure from one point to another, or you can you can think of it as gliding from one spot to another. Rotation, you're changing the orientation in space and rotating it counterclockwise or clockwise. Reflection, you know, you're flip. You can think of it as flipping a figure about a given line or reflecting it about a given line. Fourth kind of rigid motion is known as a glide reflection. So a glide reflection is basically a combination. So it's a composition of a reflection followed by a translation that is parallel to the line of reflection. So remember, since remember when you do composition, it's the order is right to left. So essentially, what you're doing is you're doing a some kind of reflection about some kind of line, say line M, followed by some kind of translation. And the translation depends on, you know, how much, where you're moving it. So, for example, you could be reflecting it about this line and then sliding it up. That would be uh, an example of a glide reflection. So, some transformations include a combination of rigid motions, just like this glide reflection. So, for example, which rigid motion maps triangle ABC to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime? So if you look at A, A, B, C, and the black and the orange triangle, they look like reflected versions of each other. If you were to flip this, then you would get the uh, orange triangle, and then you'd have to translate it so that it, it, it's, um, it slides down somehow. So first off, notice that this B as a, is at an x-coordinate of 1, and this B here is at an x-coordinate of negative 3. So what's halfway between 1 and negative 3? Well, you add those together, negative 3 plus 1, and then you divide them by 2. You take the average, or the midpoint, and you would get negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. So that means that the midpoint is at negative 1. So there is some kind of halfway point, um, so that if you reflect it halfway, you're going you're gonna to get uh, a reflection on the other side. And so what we do is, well, that line... We'll call that line k, and that, that line k is the equation x equals negative 1, which, like I, as I mentioned earlier, we got by averaging the x-coordinates for b or the x-coordinates for c or even the x-coordinates for a. So that's how we get that line, but we know that that's a, that's a reflection on both sides. So it's the same distance on both sides. Then I can take this triangle and I can shift it down. Uh, and if I take this triangle and I shift it down, then I get my triangle B. I would have to shift it down by, in this case, 5 unit, or in this case, yeah, 5 units. So if I take C and transform it to C prime, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units, because each, each of these two squares represents 1 unit. And so we can say that we have a translation five units down um, that proceeds a um, that goes after a reflection about line k. And this would be my glide. This is right here is my glide reflection. Okay, so let's talk about the composition of rigid motions theorem. So this is not an official name. It's just a name that I give it. Uh, I believe it's uh, theorem three dash forget what the uh, name of the theorem is. In the book, it um, should be theorem 3-4, but I call it the composition of rigid motions theorem, so unofficial uh, name here. But basically, the theorem states that the composition of two or more rigid motions is a rigid motion, is itself a rigid motion. So if I have two or more rigid motions that I complete with a composition, then that means that my final product will be a rigid motion, this can be proved, but we won't focus on the proof here in this lesson. We're just focus on the result of the theorem, which is that if you have two compositions of rigid motions, then you know that the final is going to be rigid. So uh, in this case, if we were to do 
you know, two reflections following each other, then we know that the final result will be a rigid motion. If we do a, any combination with a translation or a rotation, we know it's going to be a rigid motion. And so the results here are, are what are important. So basically what, what this essentially shows is that because we know a glide reflection is a combination of a, transla uh, of a, of a reflection followed by a translation, well then because that's the case, then we know that the glide reflection has to be itself a rigid motion, which, which is why we mentioned it and we called it a rigid motion, type of rigid motion. Okay, so let's look at another example. So we have a digital artist is producing a tire tread pattern from a partial tire print from a crime scene by applying a rigid motion transformation. Write the transformation or composition of transformations necessary to produce this tire pattern. And so went ahead and superimposed an X and a Y axis onto this tire tread pattern, this image of the tire. And so we have the origin here and you know, we have um, the distances, uh, it goes by, or in, in this case, our scale is going by 0.2. And so if you focus in on the tire tread pattern, if you look at this uh, rectangle here, or, or this parallelogram rather, it's a parallelogram, then uh, we notice that this pattern, um, there, there's this pattern throughout the entire uh, image, right? You have this parallelogram that's spread out throughout. And we can take that parallelogram pattern and we can actually reflect it. And when we reflect it, we get something like that. And then we notice that if we reflect it and then shift it up, then we would get this um, parallelogram. Or if we shift it down, we would get this um, bottom parallelogram. So there's a way to be able to do a glide reflection in order to get from the yellow um, parallelogram to any parallelogram on the right side. And so for example, we can reflect it about the y-axis in this case. And then we can shift it down 0.1, or we can shift it up 0.1. Uh, and it's 0.1 because halfway between 0.2 and 0 is 0.1. And so I know if I shift it halfway, it'll get me to the 0.2, which is what I, what I need it to be. Um, for here, it would get me from here up to this point. And so then when we do that, we get um, that final blue parallelogram. And of course, we could shift it down and it would have the same result. It would match this one in this case. And we can shift it up further in order to get this, this any of these uh, upper parallelograms or shift it down further. But one of the solutions would be shifting it up 0.1 and uh, reflected about the y-axis. So this is one of the solutions. So this, in so this itself is a rigid motion and it's a glide reflection. All right, so let's discuss uh, another theorem. Uh, we'll call it the rigid motion theorem. And it states that any rigid motion is either a translation, reflection, rotation, or glide reflection. So basically the four that we mentioned, translation, uh, reflection, rotation, or glide reflection. So basically um, summarizing the four rigid motions into one theorem. So if M is a rigid motion, then M could be either a, either one of these four things. Right? So there's a corollary to the rigid motion theorem that we mentioned earlier. So the rigid motion theorem, um, the corollary to this theorem is that any rigid motion can be expressed as a composition of reflections. So we know that a rigid motion can be expressed as a reflection, it can be expressed as a rotation, it could be expressed as a translation, and uh, it could be express, expressed as some kind of glide reflection, right, which would be T, which would be R, uh, which would be T compose R. Any one of those four things can be considered a rigid motion. But remember that in the previous lesson, we, in the previous lesson, we can consider a translation to be a composition of two reflections. As long as those two reflections are lines in which the um, lines are parallel, we can consider that to be a translation. That's a one special theorem that we discussed last class. And in the first theorem, uh, and in uh, actually this was in not the um, previous video, but 3.2, so this was uh, lesson 
in lesson 3.3 we discussed a another theorem in which you can take a, any rotation and you can also compose of it compose it as two r two reflections so for example let's show you the translation for the translation we can take any uh, triangle and if or any shape and we can reflect it twice and when we reflect it twice that's the same thing as a translation and for a rotation well if we take a given point in space and we uh, let's say point R and we rotate it about point P well we can take any uh, lines that cross through point P and take R and rotate it and that rotation will be the same will be double the angle between these two um, lines so if this these two lines were 30 degrees then this uh, rotation will be 60 degrees for instance and so that would be another uh, example in which two reflections can be considered a rotation and and then of course um, a reflection is just a reflection right so basically what we showed here is that we can consider any motion to be some kind of reflection and so this is a corollary to this theorem is that because any rigid motion can be expressed as any of these four and because any of these four can be expressed as reflections this must mean that any rigid motion can be expressed as any composition of reflections as long as those reflections are very specific of course okay so let's look at an example um, just to look at a glide reflection example so we want to go from triangle jkl to triangle j double prime k double prime l double prime so notice that there is some kind of reflection going on here what reflection is it going to be about well it's definitely not going to be a reflection about this because if it's a reflection about some kind of vertical axis it'll end up looking like it'll end up looking sort of like um, here I'll try to draw a little bit better but it'll end up, end up looking something like this right um, and that's definitely not the shape given in, in orange so it's definitely not that kind of reflection so then what kind of reflection is it well it's probably going to be a reflection about some kind of axis like this so that when we reflect it it'll end up looking something like that which is going to be the orange uh, so we have to figure out well what's the perfect reflection so that when we reflect it and move it we get the origin the uh, the orange shape well if we take this and we reflect it about the line y equals one then you can see well this distance is the same as this distance and we end up getting well if this is at negative two this is a distance of three so this has to be a distance of three from one to to four is a distance of three so now they're in line this is in line with the orange and by the way you can take any kind of reflection you do not have to use this particular line to reflect it you can use any line as long as it reflects it uh, as long as it's a horizontal line so in this case we use a horizontal line y equals one and then it ends up transforming it and ends up reflecting it so like it looks like this then we we can see clearly see that if we move this one two three four five units to the right well then that gives us the orange and so we can think of it as a reflection about the line m which is the equation y equals one followed by a translation of five units to the right which is plus five and so this is why this is positive positive. and of course you don't have to use y equals one you could also use another line if you if you were to use another line so if we go back here to the original problem if you use the line for example y equals two Well, in this case, L is at negative 2, and negative 2, for the distance from negative 2 to 2 is 4, and so, and so you'll, have to, you'll have to have this 4 units to the, on the other side, right? So this is 4 units here away, so it has to be 4 units away. So that means it'll be at the 6 mark. This will be L prime. This here is 1 unit away from there. So it has to be one unit 
on this other side. So let me go ahead and uh, do that now. So it's one unit here, so it has to be one unit here. So it's right here. And uh, in this case, this will be k prime because this is k. And then finally, j is four units away there, so it has to be four units away on the other side. So j would be right here. So this would be j prime. And so our I'll use this in another color. Um, so we'll do this in red. So this right here will be my reflected triangle. Notice that it still looks like J double prime, L double prime, K double prime. And then at this point, we can, we can translate it this way and this way. However, remember that, a glide ref that this will not be considered a glide reflection. If we were to do it this way, this would not be considered a glide reflection. Because remember the definition of a glide reflection. The definition of a glide reflection is a is specifically a reflection followed by a glide that is parallel to that um, that is parallel to that uh, line of reflection. So, for example, um, if you reflect here, then it has to be reflected across that line followed by a reflection in one direction that is parallel to uh, the line of that you're reflecting about. That's what we consider to be a glide reflection. So even though this will be a ridge in motion in which we have two, uh, one translation um, with a reflection, it will not be a glide reflection. And so the only way that we can get a glide reflection is to do this, in which we have the solution y equals 1, uh, is going to be the line of reflection followed by a translation of 5. All right, guys, that is it uh, for the lesson. Uh, like I said, it's supposed to be a preview of the lesson. Uh, definitely, you definitely want to uh, go and do some of the practice problems in the book and as we'll do in class. Uh, thank you. I hope you learned something from this video. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.